Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the anatomy of the tongue. To begin with, the tongue is a muscular organ situated in the floor of the mouth. It is associated with the functions of taste, speech, chewing, deglutition and the cleansing of mouth. Now the tongue comprises of skeletal muscles which are basically voluntary. Now let's learn about the external features of the tongue. This diagram shows a sagittal cross section of the tongue. The tongue has basically three main parts. A root that you can see right here, a tip of the tongue right here and a body which is divided into a curved upper surface or the dorsum that you see right here and an inferior surface right here. Now before learning about the parts of the tongue in detail, let's concise the points that we have learned till now. The tongue is a muscular organ situated in the floor of the mouth. It is associated with the functions of taste, speech, chewing, deglutition and the cleansing of mouth. The tongue comprises skeletal muscles which are basically voluntary. Looking at the external features, the parts of the tongue are the root, tip and body. The body is again divided into a curved upper surface or the dorsum and an inferior surface. Moving on to the parts of the tongue in detail. The dorsum of the tongue is divided into an oral part and a pharyngeal part by a V-shaped sulcus called the sulcus terminalis or the terminal sulcus that you see right here. The inferior surface of the tongue is confined to the oral part only. The root of the tongue is attached to the styloid process and the soft palate above and to the mandible and hyoid bone below. Here you can see the mandible and the hyoid bone. Now because of these attachments, we are not able to swallow the tongue itself. In between the mandible and the hyoid bone, the tongue is related to the geniohyoid and the mylohyoid muscles as you can see right here. Now the tip of the tongue forms the anterior free end which lies behind the upper incisor teeth. Moving on to the dorsum of the tongue, it is convex in all directions and as I had mentioned earlier, it is divided into an oral part or anterior two-thirds and a pharyngeal part or posterior one-third by a V-shaped groove called the sulcus terminalis. In this diagram, we can see the dorsum of the tongue. Here is the posterior pharyngeal part and the oral part right here divided by a V-shaped sulcus which is called the sulcus terminalis. The two limbs of the V meet at a median pit which is called the foramen cecum as you can see right here. Now apart from the oral and pharyngeal parts, we have a small posterior most part which you can see right here. Now let's learn about the oral part of the dorsum of the tongue in detail. The oral part or the papillary part of the tongue is placed on the floor of the mouth. Its margins are free and in contact with the gums and teeth. The superior surface of the oral part shows a median furrow that you can see right here and it is covered with papillae which make it rough. The inferior surface is covered with a smooth mucous membrane which shows a median fold called the frenulum lingual. In this diagram you can see the inferior surface of the oral part of the tongue. It is covered with smooth mucous membrane which shows a median fold called the frenulum lingui as you can see right here. On either side of the frenulum there is a prominence produced by the deep lingual veins and more laterally, there is a fold called the plica fimbriata that is directed forwards and medially towards the tip of the tongue. So here you can see the frenulum. On either sides, there is a prominence caused by the deep lingual vein and here is the plica fimbriata on either sides. Now let's look at the pharyngeal part or the lymphoid part of the tongue. It lies behind the sulcus terminalis as you can see right here. Its posterior surface, sometimes called the base of the tongue, forms the anterior wall of the oropharynx. The mucous membrane here has no papillae but it has many lymphoid follicles that collectively constitute the lingual tonsil. Mucous glands are also present right here. Now looking at the posterior most part of the tongue, it is connected to the epiglottis by three folds of mucous membrane. These are the median glossoepiglottic fold and the right and left lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Now on either side of the median glossoepiglottic fold, there is a depression which is called the vallecula as you can see right here. Concising the points that we learned till now, 
The dorsum is divided into oral and pharyngeal parts by a V-shaped sulcus which is called the sulcus terminalis. The inferior surface is confined to the oral part only. The root is attached to the styloid process and soft palate above and to the mandible and hyoid bone below. In between the mandible and hyoid bones, it is related to the geniohyoid and mylohyoid muscles. The tip of the tongue forms the anterior free end which at rest lies behind the upper incisor teeth. The dorsum of the tongue is convex in all directions. It is divided into an oral part, pharyngeal part and a small posterior most part. The oral or the papillary part of the tongue is placed on the floor of the mouth. Its margins are free and in contact with the gums and teeth. The superior surface of the oral part shows a median furrow and is covered with papillae which makes it rough. The inferior surface is covered with a smooth mucous membrane which shows a median fold called frenulum linguae. On each side of the frenulum, there is a prominence produced by the deep lingual veins. More laterally, there is a fold called the plica fimbriata that is directed forwards and medially towards the tip of the tongue. The pharyngeal or lymphoid part of the tongue lies behind the sulcus terminalis. The posterior surface forms the base of the tongue. It forms the anterior part of the oropharynx. The mucous membrane has no papillae but it has many lymphoid follicles that collectively constitute the lingual tonsil. Now the posterior most part of the tongue is connected to the epiglottis by three folds of mucous membrane that is the median glossoepiglottic fold, the right glossoepiglottic and the left lateral glossoepiglottic fold and on either side of the median fold there is a depression called the vallecula. Now let's learn about the papillae of the tongue. Papillae are projections of mucous membrane or corium which give the anterior two-thirds of the tongue its characteristic roughness. Now they are of the following types. First is the valate or the circumvallate papillae that you see right here. They are large in size about 1 to 2 millimeters in diameter and they are 8 to 12 in number. They are situated immediately in front of the sulcus terminalis right here. Now, each papilla is a cylindrical projection surrounded by a circular sulcus and the walls of the papilla have taste buds. Now the second type of papillae is the fungiform papillae. They are numerous near the tip and margins of the tongue as you can see right here. Third is the filiform papillae that you see in the middle. They cover the pre area of the dorsum of the tongue and give it a characteristic velvety appearance. Finally, there is foliate papillae which is present at the lateral border just in front of the circumvillate papillae. They are leaf shaped. Concising the important points under the papillae of the tongue, they are the projections of mucous membrane or corium which give roughness to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. They are of the following types that is the valate or circumvallate papillae, the fungiform papillae, the filiform papillae or the conical papillae and finally the foliate papillae. Now let's learn about the muscles of the tongue. A middle fibrous septum that you see right here divides the tongue into right and left halves. Each half contains four intrinsic and four extrinsic muscles. So first let's learn about the intrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscles occupy the upper part of the tongue and are attached to the submucous fibrous layer and to the median fibrous septum. They alter the shape of the tongue. The four intrinsic muscles are the superior longitudinal, the inferior longitudinal, the vertical muscle and the transverse muscle. First, let's look at the superior longitudinal muscle. The superior longitudinal muscle arises from the fibrous tissue deep to the mucous membrane on the dorsal of the tongue and the middle lingual septum. They pass longitudinally backwards from the tip of the tongue to its root posteriorly. Now, what is the action of this muscle? The superior longitudinal muscle acts to elevate the tip and sides of the tongue superiorly. This shapes the tongue dorsum into a concavity and it also shortens the tongue. Next we have the inferior longitudinal muscle. It originates from the fibrous tissue beneath the mucous membrane stretching from the tip of the tongue longitudinally back into the root of the tongue similar to the superior longitudinal muscle. Now what is the action of inferior longitudinal muscle? It acts to curl the tip of the tongue inferiorly. This makes the dorsum of the tongue convex in shape and shortens the tongue. Next we have the transverse muscle. It lies as a sheet on either side of the midline. It is deep to the superior longitudinal muscle but lies superficial to the genioglossus muscle as you can see right here. 
the contraction of the transverse muscle acts to narrow and increase the depth of the tongue. Finally, we have the vertical muscles. It is found at the borders of the anterior part of the tongue and it makes the tongue broad. Before moving on to the extrinsic muscles of the tongue, let's concise the intrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscles occupy the upper part of the tongue and alter the shape of the tongue. The superior longitudinal arises from the fibrous tissue on the dorsum of the tongue and the middle lingual septum. It inserts into the overlying mucous membrane. They act to elevate the tip and sides of the tongue superiorly. The inferior longitudinal originates from the fibrous tissue beneath the mucous membrane. They insert into the mucous membrane of the tongue dorsum. It lies between the genioglossus and hyoglossus and they act to curl the tip of the tongue inferiorly. The transverse muscle lies as a sheet on either side of the midline in a plane that is deep to the superior longitudinal muscles. The vertical muscles are found at the border of the anterior part of the tongue and it makes the tongue broad. Now let's learn about the four extrinsic muscles of the tongue. We have the genioglossus, the hyoglossus, styloglossus and the palatoglossus muscles. We will be learning about its origin, insertion and actions of these muscles. So first let's learn about the palatoglossus muscle. Its origin is from the oral surface of the palatine aponeurosis. Its insertion is that it descends in the palatoglossal arch to the side of the tongue at the junction of the oral and pharyngeal parts of the tongue. The action of the palatoglossus muscle is that it pulls up the root of the tongue, it approximates the palatoglossal arches and closes the oropharyngeal isthmus. Moving on to the hyoglossus muscle that you see right here. Its origin is from the whole length of the greater cornua and lateral part of the hyoid bone. It inserts into the side of the tongue between the styloglossus muscle and the inferior longitudinal muscle into the side of the tongue. Now what is the action of the hyoglossus muscle? It depresses the tongue, it makes the dorsum convex and retracts the protruded tongue. Moving on to the styloglossus muscle. It originates from the tip and anterior surface of the styloid process as you can see right here. It inserts into the side of the tongue. Its action is that it pulls the tongue upward and backward that is it retracts the tongue. Moving on to the last muscle that is the genioglossus. It is a fan shaped bulky muscle. It originates from the upper genial tubercle of the mandible. It inserts as three fibers that is the upper fibers into the tip of the tongue, the middle fibers into the dorsum and the lower fibers into the hyoid bone. The action of the genioglossus muscle is that it depresses the tongue, it pulls the posterior part of the tongue forwards and protrudes the tongue. That is basically it is a life saving muscle. In this table we can see the four extrinsic muscles, its origin, insertion as well as its actions. Now let us learn about the arterial supply of the tongue. The arterial supply is derived from the tortuous lingual artery that you see right here, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. The root of the tongue is also supplied by the tonsillar artery, a branch of the facial artery and ascending pharyngeal branch of external carotid artery. Concising the important points under the arterial supply of the tongue, it is derived from the tortuous lingual artery, a branch of the external carotid. The root of the tongue is also supplied by tonsillar artery, a branch of the facial artery and ascending pharyngeal branch of the external carotid artery. Looking at the venous drainage, two venae comitants accompany the lingual artery and one venae comitant accompanies the hypoglossal nerve. Now the deep lingual vein is the largest and the principal vein of the tongue. It is visible on the inferior surface of the tongue as we had seen earlier. These veins unite at the posterior border of the hyoglossus to form the lingual vein, which ends in the internal jugular vein. Next, let's learn about the lymphatic drainage of the tongue. The tip of the tongue drains bilaterally into the submental nodes. The right and left halves of the remaining part of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue drain unilaterally to the submandibular nodes that you see right here. Now the posterior most part and posterior one third of the tongue drain bilaterally into the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes including the jugulodigastric nodes that you see right here. Now the whole lymph finally drains into the jugulo-omohyoid group of lymph nodes that you see right here. These are known as the lymph nodes of the tongue. 
The tip of the tongue drains bilaterally to the submental nodes. Right and left halves of the remaining part of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue drain unilaterally to the submandibular nodes. The posterior most part and the posterior one-third of the tongue drain bilaterally into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes and the whole limb finally drains into the jugulo-omohyoid nodes. These are known as the lymph nodes of the tongue. Now let's learn about the nerve supply of the tongue. We have motor nerves and sensory nerves. All the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles except the palatoglossus are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. The palatoglossus is supplied by the cranial root of the accessory nerve through the pharyngeal plexus. So 7 out of the 8 muscles are supplied by the 12th cranial nerve that is the hypoglossal nerve. Moving on to the sensory nerve. The lingual nerve is a nerve of general sensation and the corda tympani is a nerve of taste for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue except the valet papillae. The glossopharyngeal nerve is a nerve for both general sensation and taste for the posterior one-third of the tongue including the circumvallet papillae. Now the posterior most part of the tongue is supplied by the vagus nerve through the internal laryngeal branch. Concising the important points under the nerve supply, the motor nerves, all intrinsic and extrinsic muscles except palatoglossus are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. Palatoglossus is supplied by the cranial root of accessory nerve through the pharyngeal plexus. Moving on to the sensory nerves, the lingual nerve is a nerve of general sensation. Corda tympani is the nerve of taste for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The glossopharyngeal nerve is the nerve for both general sensation and taste for the posterior one-thirds of the tongue and the posterior most part of the tongue is supplied by the vagus nerve through the internal laryngeal branch. Now let's learn about the taste pathway. The taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue except from the valid papillae is carried by corda tympani branch of facial nerve till the geni geniculate ganglion. The central processes go to the tractus solitarius. The taste from the posterior one-third of the tongue, including the circumvillet papillae, is carried by the cranial nerve number 9 till the inferior ganglion. The central processes also reach the tractus solitarius. Now, the taste from the posterior most part of the tongue and the epiglottis travels through vagus nerve, that is cranial nerve number 10, till the inferior ganglion of vagus. These central processes also reach the tractus solitarius. Now, after a relay in the tractus solitarius, the solitario-thalamic tract is formed, which becomes a part of the trigeminal lemniscus and reaches the postro-ventromedial nucleus of the thalamus of opposite side. Another relay here takes them to the lowest part of the post-central gyrus, which is the area of taste in the cerebrum. Concising the points under the taste pathway, the taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue except from the valid papillae is carried by the corda tympani branch of the facial nerve till geniculate ganglion. Taste from the posterior one-third of the tongue is carried by cranial nerve number 9 till the inferior ganglion. The taste from the posterior most part of the tongue and the epiglottis travels through the vagus nerve. After a relay in tractus solitarius, the solitario-thalamic tract is formed which becomes a part of the trigeminal lemniscus and reaches the thalamus. Another relay here takes them to the lowest part of the postcentral gyrus, which is the area for teeth. Finally, let's look at the clinical anatomy of the tongue. Carcinoma of the tongue is quite common. The affected side of the tongue is removed surgically. Sorbitrate is taken sublingually for immediate relief from angina pectoris. It is absorbed fast because of the rich blood supply of the tongue. Now, genioglossus is the safety muscle of the tongue because if it is paralyzed, the tongue will fall back on the oropharynx and block the air passage. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of anatomy of the tongue as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics and other health science subjects, visit my website, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.